It's the toxic college roommate that you may not even know exists until it's too late. We're talking about mold. So thank you for staying with us. I'm Erin Lebeau. I'm Corey Chambers and for Tamsin, mold actually one of the most common problems in college dorms. And since students spend so much time in their rooms, it can pose a really dangerous health risk. Yeah, our next guest is actually on a crusade to end the health epidemic caused by toxic mold. Uh, please welcome mold and air quality expert and author of the Mold Medic, Michael Rubino. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me, guys. Okay, okay, let's jump right in. You've done a lot of research on mold in college dorms. So what have you found? Well, I found that a lot of college dorms have issues with mold, uh, which actually led to a lot of media coverage over the past couple of years. Uh, but I still think that we have a lot more work to do to create awareness around this important topic. Okay. So if you walk into a room and you, you know, you, you like sniff around a little bit and you don't smell that sort of moldy smell, does that mean you're in the clear or no? Unfortunately not. I mean, we've had a lot of advancements in technologies over the years that help us identify problems that are hidden behind walls or hidden above ceilings, uh, which can still be creating an impact for the air that we're breathing. So how can you tell if the dorm you're in or the room you're in has mold? Well, it can be tricky, right, because we rely on visual and senses to kind of detect this without utilizing technology. Uh, and you want to look for these coffee-like stains, your paint bubbling, you want to look for paint cracking, things that look like there is some sort of water intrusion because mold is not going to grow without the presence of water. Uh, and then also, as you guys mentioned, you have those earthy, musty, even cigar-like smells that typically you encounter when you're in a moldy environment. And of course, that it doesn't always happen, but those are some of the quick telltale signs that you want to look for right away. Okay. And can it just be one room or is it one of those deals where, you know, one room has it, they all have it? Well, one room can be the source, but unfortunately, if that source is consistently producing spores and these particles and toxins, that can impact you from even the room next door. Mm. So what are some of the health issues or problems that someone may experience when it comes to mold? Well, it could be very extreme. I've had a client who actually was so sick, she had to get a GJ feeding tube installed just oh to my. be able to, to ingest food. But it also can be very acute. Uh, where you have things like brain fog, chronic fatigue, skin issues, gut issues, inflammation, and things like that. So it really impacts a lot of people differently, most like everything else on this planet, but it's definitely something that if you're looking to optimize your health, you want to be aware of your air quality. Uh, I know there's like different types of mold, right? Because like, you know, we, we've all heard about like black mold and you know how dangerous that is. And then I know there's other molds like so like what is there a, a scale? Is there an amount like what is wh where does it go from uh, uh, being safe to being unsafe? Well, it really becomes unsafe when there's just so much there that your body is working overtime essentially to try to remove what, what you're uh, ingesting and inhaling. I think that's really what it comes down to. There's over 100,000 different types of species. So it is way more than black mold that we want to worry about. In fact, typically when we talk about black mold, we're talking about a mold called Stachybotrys chitarum, which is a toxigenic mold. But there's another mold that is called Ketomium, also typically black in color that can be toxigenic. But then we, when we actually change gears to aspergillus and penicillium, those are typically white or green or lighter in color. And those molds can also be toxic, producing mycotoxins that can uh, really create an impact on our body. So we just want to be diligent and make sure we don't have too much mold. That's really what it comes down to. Now, we know when it comes to college campuses across the country, some of these dorm rooms have not been upgraded in years. So why have you found in your research that some of these dorm rooms are more susceptible to mold? Well, it comes back down to that fact, maintenance. You know, we have to maintain our homes and buildings and keep water away. And so if we don't have a good maintenance plan and we're not maintaining our buildings or our homes and we allow water to intrude, this can create some issues. Also, some dorms have, you know, basements where people are living in basements and any subgrade space is always more prone to moisture and humidity. Uh, it only requires 60% relative humidity for mold to start to grow. So it's really important to maintain water, moisture, humidity, and that's what's going to give us that successful action to uh, mitigating the presence of mold. All right. So it sounds like we need to get uh, like a, a, a dehumidifier and like, you know, <laughs> really focus on making sure we, we keep that humidity level under, you said 60%? 60%. So we're going to keep it under. All right. Okay. And as far as stopping it in the first place, oh, oh he, we he went him? away. 
Is he gone? No, oh, he's, there he is. I'm there here. He is. He, there he is. He's still here. He's I just still. did a little magic trick. That's all. <laughs> and and how, how do you avoid it in the first place? Because, again, we talked before where you came on on the segment that, look, these spores, they're floating around all over the place. They're always there just sort of waiting for an opportunity to grow. So how do you prevent that from happening? In the first place. all right so a couple different things we already talked about water so i won't harp on that again mm -hmm. but i think the other two things that are really important is air purification you know removing these particles from our air before they get into contact with our body is really important and also i'm going to say something that is not very popular but unfortunately is true cleaning uh what is in our dust gets into our body if you've ever sat on a couch on a sunny day and you saw that ray of light peer through a window you know exactly what i'm talking about our dust is everywhere and a lot of these particles like mold spores and the toxins that mold can produce they settle in our dust and then they opportunistically enter our body as our dust continues to recirculate so cleaning your your home cleaning your dorm room these are things that you want to stay on top of because otherwise you're, you're much more likely to inhale these pollutants all right, so the mold medic, Michael Rubino, where can people go to get more information from your research and findings? Go to changetheairfoundation.org. That's where we're doing all this work, trying to create all this awareness. It's a nonprofit, and we're here to help really change the air. All right, thank you so much for that. Thank you.